Hey, deserving listeners, it's time to continue our journey with 90 Day Fiance, Before the 90 Days, Season 4, The Tell All. Let's watch the show. My name is Dr. Kirk Honda. I'm a therapist and a professor and a podcaster and a YouTuber. Let's watch this show and see if anything of interest comes out of my face. See, that's the pleasant. thing, Tom, Tom. You keep going back and forth. You're like, yes, I was hitting on her. Yes, I was wanting her to no, ask no, her on a date. Pleasant. So then when I, I say that, you I come back like, and you go, go I was just trying to be pleasant. Together. Tom, did you also ask Stephanie out? Yeah, but she's hot. I would like to go out with Steph. I, listen, I didn't take it that way, and I just like to keep it civil I and was, nice Steph, between I all of the... I was hitting on you. Be honest. I was hitting on you. I really I did not. I don't know. It's like I hit on Steph and she doesn't know and I'm asking someone out just to go for dinner and they think it's a date. Wow, Tom. <laughs> well, again, if Tom being single is asking out two single people, uh, there's nothing wrong with that as long as he's not being a creep as Avery seemed to be kind of intimating. Who knows? Then, you know, Say la vie, right? <laughs> um, and, and Tom knew that this is going to be revealed in all likelihood on, on the internet. A lot of times people come to me and they're like, I'm lonely and I don't have any romance in my life. And one of the things that we'll talk about among a hundred other things is, well, how assertive are you in asking other people out? How, uh, how much do you lean in to trying to get romance in your life or are you just waiting for romance to happen so tom's leaning in he's trying to get romance he's trying to find that soulmate or whatever and you know as long as he's being cool about it uh i'm not going to judge it it's not dysfunctional however it does seem a little interesting that in front of darcy's face which he knows this would happen he would ask out two other women that he knows is going to be very known to Darcy and it's probably going to be talked about. Is Tom trying to come across like a certain kind of person or does he know no other women in his life? <laughs> Has he not heard of Tinder? <laughs> I don't know. It's an interesting question. Or is he trying to get more headlines? I don't want to accuse people of that kind of thing. He, but he said, I genuinely think Stephanie is hot and I would love to date uh, Stephanie. So if he, you know, uh, it's, maybe they'll go into more detail here. Hey Darcy, love you. Love you too. It's so funny how it's like Tom's getting so much enjoyment out of this because it actually hurts people. Right, so that's the part of this right here, is that for Darcy, it, it hurts to, not that it's unethical for Tom to date people after they broke up, but to do it so in her face, to not think about Darcy's feelings when choosing who to pursue. He lives in London, right, near London. There's millions of, of women in that area that he could be dating. Why these two women? we should hang out and maybe I'm your type. If I'm not your type, then of course we can just hang out normally. How am I going to take that? I'm pretty sure he didn't say things like that to Lisa in that way. You blew your cover. You blew your cover, Tom. Blew what cover, Darcy? What, what cover would she be referring to? That he blew his cover that he's a psychopath or something? That he's a terrible human being? I'm guessing that's what she means. Well, you know what? My life's been a huge journey. It's kind of like a never-ending story. You never know what the future holds. But, you know, I wish you all the best, Tom. But right now in my life, I'm focused on me and my kids and, you know, my future. And, you know, we had some great times. So they're cherished memories that I'll always have. But for now, I'm happy just being me right now. Tom, what about you? Hindsight's a wonderful thing, Darcy. And God knows I've made so many bloody mistakes in our relationship. Some out of not knowing who I was as a person. Some just petulance on my part. Hallelujah. Two thumbs up. Tom, I've made mistakes not knowing who I was as a person and also because of petulance. I'm guessing what he means by that is being an a-hole. <laughs> Uh, so let's listen back to that. Now, Darcy, I would think she, she would say, 
okay, well, you're admitting that you have problems and that's why you did the things that you did. But I'm guessing Darcy is like, well, that's not good enough. But anyway, I want to rewind because I want to hear what Tom is saying there. And God knows I've made so many bloody mistakes in our relationship. Some out of not knowing who I was as a person, some just petulance on my part. So that's always been my hypothesis about Tom is that he doesn't really know who he is or he knows kind of who he is, but not enough so that he can navigate situations in a way that meets his needs and also takes care of other people and is consistent because he seems all over the map with Darcy, with Shannon, back to Darcy, to Avery and all these things. He doesn't seem to have a, a clear idea of who he of who he is and what he wants. A lot of the people who are close to him that he appreciates tend to dominate him, his friend, his sister, uh, his ex-girlfriend actually also is very seemingly very dominant in a way. And he's a leaf in the wind, as I call it. Someone emailed me and <laughs> asked, is leaf in the wind a clinical term? No. <laughs> Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if some author has used that term before, but it's it's a term for being at, at the mercy of other forces, right? That you don't have volition in the world. You don't have agency. And it's hard to have agency when you don't know who you are or what you want. And I know a lot of you watching, ha a lot of you have emailed me and said that you can relate to that. Due to relational traumas, due to neglect growing up, not given enough space to explore who you were, not, giving enough, not given enough attunement by your parents to know who you are and know your emotions, know your needs, it's, then you can have adults who are 45 years old and they don't really know who they are and what they want. And people who lack a connection with themselves will walk around thinking, well, this is just how, this is just how it is. I'm an empty person or I'm indecisive. Everyone else seems to be decisive. I'm indecisive. There's nothing wrong with me. There isn't anything wrong with you. What is at play here is that as a young person, you, there's a period of time when you are optimal for getting to know who you are. It's ages two through six-ish. Those times are optimal for brain development of attunement so you can get to know your emotions, your identity, the fact that you are someone and other people are other people, it's not an automatic thing that, that we know. We have to experience that mentalization, what's going on in someone else's mind, what's, what's really going on in my mind, what are my needs, what do my needs feel like? When I need attachment and love, what does that feel like? What does that physically feel like? And then my brain interpreting that physical feeling, how do I get to know that? How do I know that I'm being tread upon? How do I know that people are uh, disrespecting me. What does that feel like? How do I know that? How do I, how can I tell the difference between I'm hurt and I need to lash out and lie to someone or I'm hurt and I just need to be hurt? How do I tell the difference? Those are things that you learn very young. And if your parents were not good enough, they were compromised in some way, either abuse or they were depressed or they were drinking a lot or they were working too much or there were too many kids in the family to for the parents to pay attention to or whatever. There's a wide variety of things that can get in the way of uh, good enough parenting. Then you're 45 and you still haven't done that, but you can connect with who you are. It's down there. You have all the needs, you have all the emotions, you have all the personality, you have all the goals, so to speak, and you have to get in contact with it. And the way you do that is by going to in all likelihood, the fastest route is to go to a therapist that specializes in sense of self-development. And it's usually psychodynamic people, psychoanalytic people, maybe attachment-based people. They, interpersonal people, they will be able to connect you with yourself by helping you to explore that, by essentially reparenting you in a sense where you're able to sit down on the couch and explore while someone attunes to you in a way that isn't directive, doesn't tell you what to do. Uh, to a three-year-old that is, that is at that critical sp time and space, and parents out there, I'm guessing you know this, but if you don't, uh, it's, there's, the three-year-old is playing with blocks and toys, and 
uh, it, it's it's fun and they're like whoa okay look at me i'm building this tower and dad walks in and says oh i see it looks like you're having fun building a tower right there and it's simple just a little reflection like that just an observation oh i see that you're building a tower or i see that you're drawing a tree that looks really fun it looks like you're having fun right there and the kid's like so the kid the kid will probably just keep drawing or keep playing with blocks but that gets into their head they're like that starts rolling around in their head they're just like wait so this is what fun is fun dad knows me because dad's a god he knows me i'm having fun right now huh this is what fun is this is what i do when f this is how it feels in my body huh this is what it feels like to to want something i want to draw a tree and i did draw a tree and dad noticed it and it's fun it's piecing it all together now I, this is all subconscious, it's neurological, it's like learning a language, it's, it, we don't do this consciously, we absorb it. And you get to know, like, as your needs bubble up, this is what it feels like, and it's, it's, this, it's an unconscious thing. Like for me, I decided to sit down in front of this camera right now and do this. How did I know? I, I don't have to do this. This is all voluntary. <laughs> I, I could stop this YouTube channel tomorrow if I just decided not to do any videos. How did I know that I wanted to do that? Well, it's mostly subconscious, but it's somewhat conscious of just like, I have a little itch, you know, that I, I, I wanna, the tell all is out there and it feels un, incomplete. If I don't yammer for hours and hours as I watch this TV show, <laughs> there's, my life is not complete. I feel it in my bones. And so I could be watching TV with my wife in the living room over there, <laughs> but, I'd, there's this other desire, you know, after I'm done with this, I'll go in there and we'll watch TV, but, but I want to do this too. And how did I know that? How, how do I know that? Well, it's because my parents during that critical period gave me enough space and I've been to a lot of therapy <laughs> and I've spent a lot of time trying to get to know who I am and valuing that. So for Tom, my hypothesis, total speculation is that for him, it, it's harder for him to know who he is and what he wants. And he just admitted that. I wish he would go into more detail on that. Maybe he will. I wish he would say to Darcy, so for whatever reason, I've discovered it's hard for me to know who I am. It's hard for me to know what I want. And at times, I, I felt like I really did love you and really did want to be with you. And then other times, I felt like I didn't. But I wasn't sure because I'm, I know myself well enough to know that I, I'm, I'm very uncertain about what I want in any given moment. I don't know why that is, but it's just hard for me to know what I want. And that's terrible because it hurts. I've hurt other people in the past and I hurt you because there were times when I felt like I really wanted to be with you. And then the next day I'd be like, wait, I don't want to be with her. And that's my fault. I don't know what's going on with me with that, but uh, that that's what was going on with me when when you when I said I loved you I did and then there were other moments obviously when I clearly didn't when I met Shannon I was I, I was confused I was truly confused and I know how that could come across like I was this devious Machiavellian psychopath who wants to hurt people but I hope you believe me that I don't I don't see myself that way I'm a caring person but I also just don't really know what I want and it kills me that I keep flip-flopping all the time and i don't know what to do that would be a way to really apologize to really lay it out there so hopefully tom can say something in that direction for not actually doing what i should have done and, okay, and i can well, only be sorry for that i can only be sorry and i hope one day if not now but in the future you will see that i did love you and i'm sorry if i ever did anything that hurt you because i never meant that all right two thumbs up for that for tom uh it's a great thing, thing to say, if, especially if you're the person that did the breaking up. I'm sorry, and I'm sorry if I did anything that hurts you. Uh, I, I wish there were more words in there. Maybe he'll say more words. As, I hurt you in this way. I hurt you in that way. That was wrong. That was wrong. Here's why. It's not an excuse. You know, all the different elements of a good apology. But, you know, it's pretty good right there. Let's see how Darcy reacts. And I didn't. I accept your apology. Okay, life goes on. I'm yeah, strong yeah, enough. Yeah. I'm not a weak woman. I have two beautiful I daughters. You're I know you. So it's great that Darcy accepted the apology. 
I accept your apology. But then she quickly follows it up with, I'm, I'm strong enough. I'm not a weak woman. That's an, inter- that's an interesting response to that, that he, he is saying, I'm sorry. And it sounds like she's interpreting it like condescension, as if he's looking down on her in some way. And maybe he is in some way. It doesn't, didn't feel that way to me. But she feels the need to, to uh, point out that she's strong and maybe it's like maybe it's vulnerable for her to be apologized to uh and 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 so as someone's apo- let me figure this out so darcy's sitting there tom is apologizing i'm sorry i hurt you i'm sorry that i hurt your feelings oh so i'm guessing for darcy in order to accept the apology and sort of accept this exchange this is just a guess darcy has to admit that tom hurt her and to do that is vulnerable. And so she needs to counter that by saying, I'm a strong person, you know? You don't need to apologize to me because I'm above it all or something, not above it all, but I'm, I've moved on from this relationship. You don't have to apologize. I accept your apology, but you don't have to because I don't care. Some kind of self-protection there uh, is my guess. You know. Thank you for saying that. Thank you, because I am. All right. Well, that does it for that episode of Psychology in Seattle. Thanks for joining me out there. Please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.